Good afternoon. It's a very rainy and tiring day, isn't it? Yes. So that's why I try to be fast. So it means at first I'd like to tell you no homework for you for tomorrow from my side. That is, I, I, I'm sorry, I, uh, I'm not very interactive now because we have limited time and my colleague uh, Christian Kish is coming soon for the second half of this hour, the last hour is for you. Okay, and I have two presentations, one theoretical and one practical. Uh, so the topic is, of course, it's interesting, but the, the problem is comparing other topics which has marketing, marketing components or something emotional com component. So the supply chain, and I you know, the supply chain is a huge topic, huge process, and I try to talk just about mainly logistics part of the supply chain management. But it's also a huge one. But we have a great job to find the optimum, but unfortunately we have limited possibilities to find the best option because we must really move the goods from a geographical point to another one. So we must find the connection and the transport process between sources and the place of uses. So it takes time, it has cost, and of course we can find distance between them. Okay, let, let's see what we can do. If we would like to be very, very environmentally friendly, forget all the combustion engines, so no, no cars, no trucks, no lorries, no airplanes anymore. Let's go back. We had in the ancient ages, for instance, sailing boats. We had uh, human, so uh, people powered boats. And we had camels, horses, donkeys. But do you want to go to this type of transportation? So would you like to see again animals powered coaches on the roads in Prague in the okay maybe the city center for tourist attraction is okay, but not for everyday life. So we must keep reality what we can do and how we can do it. Don't forget production in the last few decades very very we can become very, very globalized and very, very centralized. So it's very typical. Production is a mass production somewhere. Remember clothes, remember the electronic equipment, huge car factories, producers, they are somewhere and they are distributed worldwide. Comparing the cost, for instance, production cost, the labor cost, and the other ones in, in China, for instance, and adding cost of transportation from Asia to Europe, and see the cost altogether divided, the quantity of the product, it looks very good. You buy something using online eBay, you need something, a cover, of your new mobile phone. It's unbelievable, unbelievable. How cheap it can be. But this production was somewhere in Far East. How it's possible? They transport big quantities in one container, thousand or probably ten or hundred thousand of pieces, and relatively one container transportation by the sea to Europe it's okay it's not a big amount it's not a small amount but big pieces big uh, quantity of goods are inside and you will get your cover from somewhere in a local or regional deposit close to your destination or your address so the cost effective uh, production and logistics distribution is very important nowadays it's not a 
automatic process. We must design it, we must plan how to do and where to do, and of course, the operation of this system is also interesting and can be much more expensive or much cheapest, cheaper. Sorry. Let's see the elements of the supply chain. Long distances or short distances. Rapidly increasing energy prices. Increasing cost. They are all together are more and more important, but sometimes, for instance, energy prices are underlined, like now, sometimes distances, sometimes international rules, regulations, duties, and other necessary uh, treatments or certificates and so on. Don't forget, we had not a long time ago, pandemic. And the global logistics chains were very often blocked. It was not easy to get a part, a spare part, into your car to, to, to get some products, chemicals, for instance, for producing medicines. And it made some troubles in global distribution. Therefore, companies try to think about again advantages of regional production, safety of the production, and ensuring distribution. Furthermore, local labor using. It's a, it's a social aspect of it, and not just the calculated uh, costs are more and more important in a society. The other point of views are also more and more important, which depends on the people living in an area or in a country. Let's see something. Logistics has output and has emissions, which is also a type of output. So in the European Union, after the energy industry, passenger and freight transport responsible for the second largest amount for greenhouse gas emissions. what we can do, but we are living now in Europe and not far from here is a war between Russia and Ukraine. My question, can be a war environmental friendly? I don't think so. It's not the the, the top question during the war, which emissions there, which greenhouse gases they can produce. Okay, I know that this is the most important question for a short time. For short time, short time social aspects and people kill each other and so on, destroy. But for a long time, how many square kilometers of forests are not anymore? Or which, which emission will be required to rebuild, to renew these destroyed areas? How to transport to these destinations different building materials, raw materials, goods and different energy energies to recreate an acceptable life again. But don't forget, wars are not just this part of Europe. On the world, as I remember a few uh, weeks ago, I 
try to check it. More than 30, 30 military conflicts are. They are smaller or they are far from here. And they are not on TV, but they are also a problem, people living there, and globally for the global economy and environment. That, by the improvement of environmental performance and internalization of their externalities, are expected and will also appear among logistics service providers. So it's also responsibility. How we can do something which are now in origin in our countries and which impacts and, and uh, long time uh, impact mainly will be. And the other side is also interesting, how we can protect ourselves seeing and realizing uh, impacts of different economic and other situations like the war. We hope something is visible, something is not visible, something is dangerous, and something is extremely dangerous. Don't forget if, if suddenly, uh, not, not from the from the army, but I don't want to imagine what's happening if a nuclear catastrophe will be in that area. Supply chain management. What is that? So management of the flow of goods and services includes all processes that transform raw materials into final products. As I mentioned, centralized management of the flow of goods and services and includes all process processes that transform raw materials into final products. That process can be short or long, integrated, concentrated, or decentralized and after fit together. Put together typical assembly lines are different countries and uh, comparing the, the sources, geographical things, and so on. So that's the sustainability, which is our future, becomes more and more important for each participant of the economy. By managing supply chain, look at this picture. I think everybody understands it. It's a very, very mixed, and it's very, very uh, developing structure and at the output important to manage to, to operate it as clean as it is possible. Going back to the, the political and economic changes in central and eastern part of Europe. You know, a country in Europe which has the capital town, Kishinev or Kishinev nowadays. So it's what that yeah. It was a typical industrial country during Soviet time. Metal industry was the leading industry there. They imported Iron ore transported by rivers and the Black Sea. They transported a lot of coal for heating, black coal or brown. And that was nice for the GDP. What happened when political and economic changes suddenly happened. According to the previous contract, Russia didn't want to sell them raw material, energy, and so on. 
just on market. It was not a good situation for them because the companies were not very, very modern and efficient ones, but emissions was huge. So they finished in many companies iron production and suddenly blue sky green fauna and flora and so on. So suddenly the air and the conditioners refreshed and much better parameters than before. But let's see the society. Much more unemployment, poorer life. So what's the question? How to put in the road the priorities? Short term, long term. Comparing transport costs, comparing raw material, energy, and other ones. So it's no, not easy to answer. Let's see the next one, uh, the five parts of supply chain management. Uh, I, I uh, jump them very, over them very fast. So the first is planning. Of course, I underline the alternatives, which is the best today. Is not sure it's best for tomorrow. But how we can find the optimum? Just for a company and at company level, or at a country level, or globally? No, just one answer. Sometimes one part is important, some other ones, but the future is future for everybody and the system. That's why we should try to find sourcing, the best sources, which ensure for us not just the materials, the added services, cost and impact together. You can uh, listen to the media and it's on science as well, discussion uh, solar panels. Is it environmental friendly or not environmental friendly? Because when a solar panel is ready to use, after it, absolutely environmentally friendly. But what's happening until this panel is ready to use? I can't tell you is an answer to the big discussion. Manufacturing, as I thought. How to produce this panel? And not just the cost, the impact, the nature answer, and where we can. In Hungary, a uh, few weeks ago, signed a contract between a Chinese company and the Hungarian government. So in Hungary will be one of the biggest battery production in few years. You know, battery production is, uh, so it's not, not like <coughs> baking bread. Which materials you must use? Are there these materials in Hungary? No. Are there, are there some dangerous materials to produce batteries? How many liter of water needs to produce one battery? So, okay, we will have uh, workplaces for approximately 9,000 people. It's a big advantage. Because people must earn money, they must leave. But let's see, the backstage. I don't want to tell you 
uh, yes or no, it's okay or not okay because I have no exact information. But the social responsibility, nobody asked people living there, do they want it? Do you have enough information about it? Talking about greening country, greening industry, is it part of this story? Or, okay, greening industry, but it's, it's not part of this story. The next one is delivery, as I told you. How to take the component, how to transport component to this place, geographically. And let's see the last one, return. Big discussion. Nuclear energy is a green energy or not a green energy? How do you think? Is it green or not green? Is it dangerous or not dangerous? So not easy to tell simply yes or no. Yes, please. It has advantages and disadvantages. Because when you're producing it, it does not produce the CO2 emissions. But then when you put the waste in the ground, then it's dangerous. That is. If everything is OK, it's working, it's controlled, more or less we can tell it's green. Just a remark. In this situation, nowadays, do we need nuclear plants? Uh, in Hungary, I think we need it. No chance to close this nuclear power pump, uh, plant because we have no extra chance to get, except for, for acceptable price, uh, electric energy from other countries. So without it, for instance, Hungary can't uh, leave, but it it uh, doesn't mean that's our future for decades and centuries. Yes, please? I just think, like some countries, uh, for example, France, they are really proud that they have everything, every energy comes from the nuclear plants. Mm -hmm. But I think it should be like stabilized and balanced because if we just rely on that, then it's like really dangerous. Yeah. But to get rid of it at all, like too much radical. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. And don't forget, transportation is, and logistics logistic don't uh, talk about just the real goods moving from a place to another one. Energy transport is also. And if you pump electricity somewhere to the network in Norway, for instance, and would like to use it in Hungary or Czech Republic, there will be, for instance, 100% and how many percent arise? Because of using system, the waste is technically appears. And the last one you mentioned, going back to the nuclear power plant, what happened when these cells not available anymore to use? So that's return. Where to return? Would you like a nuclear, uh, used nuclear storage next to your home? It's, it's used. OK. But it, it doesn't mean nothing happened. Yeah? yeah? But I think those like, disadvantages or like falls have even the green energy. For example, those uh, windmills. Yeah, they, when they have the battery, they they have to also degrade, like put it in the ground, and then that's also dangerous, and then it's not dissolvable. Yes. So everything has faults, and yeah. then all the batteries from the hybrid cars and electric cars. So that's why I uh, told you some examples, which means the light is not black or white. It's much more colorful and complicated. Then we think. This moment we have some priorities. Few decades ago we had different priorities, and I'm sure in the future we will be also different priorities. But how we can join 
thinking, economic aspects of it, greening aspects of it, and many other ones, logistic aspects and so on, to find the best solution. And we have different models. Okay, which models we can use? It depends. Which is the most important? Quick turnover is the most important for me. Maybe yes. Okay. But my, for instance, if I have a, a, a small enterprise, we work five together. Should we think about the global environmental impact? Of course, yes. But how big my responsibility in it? It's very difficult to answer. Of course, uh, mentality and thinking on it is very important for each person. But how to put together the very simple story happened in Hungary. My wife is a secondary high school teacher. And uh, she tried to explain selective, separated waste collection in the school. It happened, for instance, five, ten years ago. And tried to teach children, stu uh, students, how to do this. And where to drop, where to put. Slowly, step by step, it was okay. And what happened? Some children went home. They live in a small block of flats where the kitchen is just six, seven square meters and told the parents, we should collect separated waste because that was a topic on the classes and it's, it's nice and it's good for the future. If the parents answer, don't be stupid. You can see we are not enough room to use chairs for us to eat on the table. Where to put different bins for selective? So you can, you can understand. The mentality is important. There's the final model. Custom model. And let's see to the conclusions of the time is running now. So, how will be the life in 2050? Probably you will see, I'm not sure. But I don't want to tell you it doesn't mind, it's not my not my business. What will be? So that's, we will see in a supply chain management. And we have talked, or you have talked about a lot of different aspects of sustainable supply chain, second hand clothes, different uh, uses of natural sources, waste management. Each category needs transportation. What is the distance? What is the mode of transportation for goods? And I try to talk about it in my next presentation about passengers, people, to move and which impacts can be after it. <coughs> 